Hi, I'm Lucy Hall from avisomedia.com and socialday.co.uk and you are listening to the Social Media Talks podcast with Alan Hennessy from compassmedia.ie. Welcome to Social Media Talks podcasts brought to you by compassmedia.ie. Hello and thank you for joining me. This is the Social Media Talks podcast brought to you by compassmedia.ie. I'm your host, Alan Hennessy, and this is the podcast to help business owners who want to learn more about social media marketing. And if you would like to listen to any of our previous podcasts, you can log on to our website at www.compassmedia.ie forward slash social media talks podcasts. And we are looking forward to today's guests on our show. We are going to be joined by Lucy Hall who is a social media strategist and also a social media speaker and the co-founder of Social Day. She also owns a company called Aviso Media. And uh, we're going to have a great chat today. We're going to be talking all about uh, content creation and the tools that you can use. So let's transition straight over to the interview with Lucy. Hi, Lucy. How are you today? Great to have you on the show. Hi, Alan. I'm doing really well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm really excited to be here. Brilliant. And uh, what we're going to do is today we're going to be talking about content creation and all the tools that you can use. So maybe, first of all, before we go into that, uh, you might give people a little bit of a background uh, on yourself. I've given them a brief introduction. So Of course. Thanks, Alan. Well, um, obviously, I've been working in social media for the last few years, for about seven or eight years now, coming from a media background. And what I do is I, have, I work in a social media agency and digital marketing agency agency and we create content for clients and um, and then distribute that content across social media and um, build relationships with people so that we can obviously um, make sales and build brand awareness and that kind of thing. And just recently we launched an event two years ago called Social Day, which is a social media marketing event for marketers and um, people in businesses who actually carry out the marketing for their business. And f- you know from that I've kind of learned about all of the different tools and that kind of thing that you can use for social media marketing. And you know, I've got some really, really good fun ones in my toolbox love it love it i'm go- really going to enjoy this one and um, because you know it is it's it's a vital part of obviously what we do on social media and uh, having the tools to make your life easier always you know it, it that that excites me and then that makes my life easier i believe it it has to be a good thing so yeah like so it really is content creation you're talking right across the board here we're not just talking about creating a simple little graphic type of thing so no. we um i suppose we might as well delve into it first so i suppose um where will, where should we go first when we're, when we're looking at content creation and um, okay well obviously the um as long as people have the right the right message for their talk, target audience then you can go on there from there to create really good content of course and we're only going to know if that content's working if we're getting really good engagement from that target audience mm. um, so engagement is obviously a really good KPI to look out for so when you're creating content if when it goes out there if people are sharing it liking it commenting sending you messages wanting to buy your services you know that content's working and just create more content like that and then yeah I mean to answer your question what kind of tools can you use to create that content there are thousands of different tools out there that you can use um, really cost effective tools um, so if you're a startup or you're on a budget these tools come in really handy if you can't afford to hire someone to do the big production videos and that sort of thing you can do it all you can do everything on your mobile phone nowadays basically mm. um so what do you want to start with like um i mean video video is so important isn't it at the moment live video and recorded video there's some amazing tools you know to create video so do, should we start with video i suppose we best with we, well i i don't mind but i'm i'm intrigued now to find out about video because i've ever i've only ever used maybe i suppose facebook live and yeah. Uh, I think eCam as well because I we use a Mac here in the office. But like, yeah, I'm sure there's loads more out there that even I don't know about. Yeah, well, um, for example, if people aren't like um, you, Alan, and you're really good in front of the camera, and some people don't want to be in front of the camera, but they want to create a message for their brand, but you know they don't want to stand there talking to people like person to person mm. uh, on a live stream. There are things that you can create, videos that you can create where you can get a message across without actually having to spend hours and hours on it, commissioning someone to do it, or creating all 
with your own footage. And um, one of my favorite ones is called Biteable. And Biteable is literally, it's a video content creation tool. We can put your own messages in, that kind of thing, create video. You can also upload your own logos and branding and everything else. And um, you can create videos for as short or as long as you like. You can create intros on it. You can create longer videos. Um, I know that people have used Biteable videos and, they, and they've gone viral and stuff. Wow. And because the message was right. Um, you can create images, you know, the videos with the text over the top. You can upload your own video footage. They've got a massive stock library. So you can use basically, um, there's a lot of free stock, but there's also a whole massive stock library in Shutterstock and that kind of thing where you get a discounted rate to use the footage as well. Um, and it's like, it's almost like, um, it's just such an easy editor. You can do it frame by frame in animation style as well. And it's just a really, really good tool. And it's something like a hundred pound a year and you can create as many videos as you like with it. That's fantastic. And it's a, that's very affordable. If I suppose if you capitalize on that and you actually do start to use it on a regular basis, you know, like there's a lot, I know there's a lot of tools out there where people buy them and what they say is, oh yeah, yeah grand, I'll start in that. And then all of a sudden it's three months later or four months yeah. later, or five months later. And they say, oh, I remember I had that tool. Yeah, somewhere along. Whereas if you are using these type of tools, yeah. you know, on a weekly or even on a every bi-weekly basis, they work out spending that type of money. And, you know, like a hundred pound, it's, it's really not that, it's really not that much when you think about it, when you're creating fantastic videos as well. I suppose it really is that type of, I think when you're doing videos, I think it's so important, as you say, to get your right message across. Yes. That, I think that really does, that, that's, that's the key to it. 100%. As long as the message is right, and you can test a little bit, especially if you're, um, if you're a smaller business, for example, it's a lot easier to test and to be more robust and just um, test things as you go along, of course. If, you, if you're a bigger business and you have stricter brand um, guidelines or you work within a corporate company, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, but I, I suppose um, I'm suggest- what I'm suggesting here is for people who um, you know, want to kind of do it themselves, hit the ground running, you know, and, and try and create their own content, basically. Actually, Biteable is really, really good for creating the header videos on your Facebook page. Oh, very good. Yeah, because that's that's a big thing. Because I've noticed yeah. even a lot of a lot of businesses have done this, but it's not right. It's the size isn't yeah. right. It's just not. Exactly. It's just not created right. And that's a really very good point to make. And mm-hmm. it's a really, really uh, excellent because I do believe that that is a key. Like I've noticed, I've gone to a number of pages and I've seen the videos, and they are fantastic. They really yeah. just they lift the whole that whole yes. Facebook page and they. Lift lift your whole brand and yeah. if you you know whereas badly produced ones they just diminish what you're you know, what you're trying to achieve yeah. you know yeah. exactly and if you are going to record it on your mobile phone and then upload it to your cover photo it's not it's not necessarily going to be the right size because you're viewing it on people are viewing that on desktop and don't forget on your mobile phone they're just going to see the static image or mm. whatever frame you choose and if it's just you talking it's not necessarily going to create the impression that you want it to this is actually this is actually a place where you can um, you know really showcase what you do and what your business does um, you know, so it is, it is, you're right, Alan. It's the most, it's one of the most, it's the first things people see on desktop, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so you, they really need to make it count, you know? Mm. And that's, that, so that's biteable.com. Is this only available for your iPhone or your Android or whatever it is, or is it available on desktop as well? This is a desktop tool, actually. Oh, and actually, even. I find using things like this on desktop easier than on a mobile phone. There are things that you can get for your mobile phone. For example, you could use, if you want to create a video, like a head of video for your Facebook page again you could use something like Canva to create the images and then you could upload them to um, a Giphy creator and create the video with a GIF mm. so like a slideshow yeah. and then download it like that and create the video like that and um, the quality isn't going to come out as good mm. um, and obviously if you're creating a video, a large video file on your phone that can take a long time to upload and of course you can't upload it to your cover photo from your phone No you have to go through desktop Yeah, yeah. Yes you yeah. have to go through de- desktop so some things it is worth doing on a desktop um, and there are loads of other kinds of um, apps and things that you can get your get for your phone. Of course, you can use things like iMovie and that sort of thing on your phone. The quality doesn't always come out as good as it does on desktop. And there's always things like Videorama and things like that. But again, it's good for um, like Twitter video and stuff like that. Mm. Not when you're thinking about creating high quality video for social media. Yeah, that's very good. So, you know, that's great for video video content because I, I, I believe, as I said, I think it's a huge area that is just, it's just going to keep growing day, yeah. day by day. Like yeah. it just seems to be the way people are going that moving away from, you know, I suppose five years ago it was text-based posts or whatever it may be on Facebook and tweets and stuff like that whereas then it moved on to you know imagery now it's moving on to video as well so you know it's become yeah. a very important part because people want to be entertained at the end of the and day gifts. You know? gifts is another one which I don't think I think is very underutilized because a lot of people don't actually like I know there's one particular one that I use um, I think it's Jimmy Kimmel or something like that and he's waving and I just it's a great one for if you introduce yourself you're saying you know hi 
it if you're on Twitter and someone yeah. follows you that you just go hi or whatever and it's just that you know handshake and it's very good and it gets a smile it really does you know, you know and of course um, you can create your own gifts as well for your business or for mm-hmm. your personal brand um, because Giphy's got its own gift creator so you can upload an existing video and turn a little snippet of it into a gift so it could be you doing something silly or you know saying hi and that kind of thing I, I don't know if you know Andrew and Pete but they've got their own Giphy channel um, so that when they reply to people they use pictures of themselves waving or doing a funny gesture and they put the text underneath like a meme type style yeah. which is a really fun thing for personal branding also one thing I love to do for clients for example is create a series of images and you'll see it on top of my Twitter um, feed that I created one for an event just to show you how to you know how to do it via Canva you can do it via Design Wizard for example I'll talk about those a little bit later but you can create like five or six um, posts like um, so hi my name is Lucy Hall one each kind of with a bit of text on it mm. and then upload it to Giphy um, choose your speed and then when people see that in your feed it's actually you know it's actually on a loop so people will see that kind of with different brilliant. images behind or whatever and it's just a lot more eye catching than a static image yeah oh yeah brilliant uh, like Giphy is it's a fantastic tool oh, I've, I've only used it very sl- very slightly because yeah. like that I think you need a bit of time to spend doing these type yes. of these things to you know to find your own feed I suppose as well with them so you know that yeah I would yeah. agree yeah yeah brilliant um, so we can move on to other uh, yes. programs a lot of these programs though they are available on desktop and I think as you said and just reiterating your point is is that you know I think if you are creating any type of content you should really try and do it on your desktop all right there is certain programs yeah. that you have to use that are only available on mobile but yeah. at the same token I think to get the proper feel for it I think yeah. desktop or your laptop or something like that th- it works so much better well yeah I mean take um, and this is what everyone's favorite okay something like well Canva this is a favorite mm. for social media marketers we love Canva because it's an easy content creation tool and, and and just quickly on Canva a lot of people don't know um, or they forget about some of the features that are in there so you can actually create an image in Canva now and click a button and it turns it into an animation you can download it as a gif on Canva which is a really easy thing to do but yeah I mean it's not the experience the user experience for creating content on your mobile phone on Canva is just not as good as it is creating it on your desktop and so it's much easier to create it on your desktop if you're batch creating content for example that you know the, the content that you know needs to go out that needs to be scheduled out across the month um, and if you create that in um, in Canva you, there's something you can do you can press a button and click abracadabra and um, the, the images will um, change will, it will create several different images in all the different sizes the right sizes for each social network Brilliant. Um, which is a really good way to make sure that your content is appearing how you want it to appear on every network rather than it being skewed or mm. you know look at dodge and that, that is a big thing which you know people I see it we see it day in day out yeah. where people actually are just they create a one image and they say oh I'll use that on Facebook I'll use it on Twitter I'll use it on whether it be LinkedIn or whatever it may be exactly. and it's just it's the wrong size now you get away with it you know get away with it and a good friend of ours uh, Trevor Lorkins did say if you are going to do that he says yeah. make sure you're putting your text into the middle that yes, it's not exactly. around the edges because when you put yeah. it around the edges it, it just loses it you know so that's that's a, I suppose exactly. another thing and um, on Instagram as well because you see that people um, will put posts on um, Instagram looks better when it's all squares doesn't it but it doesn't have to be in square format mm. anymore it can be you know in any size but obviously the Facebook post size is a little bit wider than a square um, so if you put in those posts on Facebook you're going to lose some of the image yeah. uh, you're putting them on Instagram from Facebook so it is worth just creating content natively for every single platform mm. and get things like Canva just make that mega easy and I suppose and then speaking about that is, is and I don't want to be going off point but is, is don't forget you also have sort of the types that say Google Drive where you can actually you know you can open up three or four different folders and have your Instagram posts have your yeah. you know your whatever it is your Facebook and your Twitter posts mm. and put them into the separate folders so you know when you do go to upload images or you do go to put content up yeah. that you can just go into you know oh okay I'm doing an Instagram post I pull from that you know yeah. it's so simple exactly. it's, it just makes your life so much easier I suppose it's file maintenance as much as anything you know that's well, what you're doing yeah because, mm. because then that way as well you're building up a library of content basically yeah. that you can then use over and over again mm. I mean not, not like every day but you know you can use that content again you can schedule it out later for la- at later days especially when there's times when you are you get ultra busy um, with it you know working in, in your business and you haven't got time to kind of do all of the marketing and stuff then at least you know you've got these folders full of content that you can make sure so you make sure that um, you have this awesome co- content and this awesome presence happening um, on social media even when you're not present yourself very true and then we move on to uh, as we where we talk about Canva there um, what other ones are out there for, for even I suppose creating text and stuff like that on images and st- yeah. I, you know I think that that's 
I often see that people doing that and sometimes they don't really get it right so right. I'm sure there is there's a load of programs out there that you can use and tools out there that you can use for this oh there's so many tools really easy ones um, you know my favourite one of my favourite ones is word swag because it's just very easy to use if you just want to put a simple message out with an image and some text over the top word swag on your mobile phone anyone could do it <laughs> literally anyone my mm. five year old daughter could do it um, Typeram is a very similar sort of thing but it's just got some different text kind of layouts and stuff and the more text layouts you've got obviously you know the better unless it's something that has to be completely on brand and it's got to be the same font every time mm. Mm. just make sure you're using your favourite one and mixing the images up of course Ripple obviously that's really quite a fun app to use it's templated it's almost like slideshow kind of images yeah. but it just makes your it makes your um, content or your ads or whatever animated basically like little videos and stuff you can even put music on them Over I really love Over Over's got some amazing designs in there that you can okay use. I never heard of Over you build your own library um, of your favourite designs as well so that you can keep creating content from your own you know your own sort of brand guidelines which is really good you'd like Over but it's pricey I think for what it is it's like £9 a month or something and mm. it's just an iPhone app but it is very very good I it's must, very, check, very must good. check these out what we'll do is, is we'll put these on the show notes anyway well, and we'll put the links to them as well so you know so people can see them and have a look yeah, at them brilliant. You know. I'm brilliant. just a bit of an app you know like a, um, anything that makes life easier because we can be creative we can have all of the amazing ideas but then we need to work out how to get these ideas out and how to create you know turn these ideas into reality mm. and actually what this technology does these tools and technology does it makes it easier for creative people to get their ideas out yeah. much easier and yeah. much quicker and less in a less frustrating way yeah oh totally and I, I would agree with that because you know as you say like you can be very creative and then some people say oh how do I get that I want to put yeah. that up on Facebook or I want to put it up on my website or I want to put it up on the blog or whatever oh. and you know they say how do we do it whereas these apps and these programs and these tools they all help you they nearly do it for you they nearly exactly. integrate it straight away I suppose yeah. so now we have all of our content created how do we and, and I know you um, we spoke to a guy, we spoke to Andy Lambert yeah. on the on a previous podcast about content Cal but yeah. from a user's perspective maybe you'd like to talk about a little bit about that yeah um, well um, anybody who knows me will know I'm a huge advocate for Content Cow. Absolutely love it. So I've been using things like um, Hootsuite. I'd obviously use Buffer for a, for a long time. Buffer's, a, Buffer's still a great tool, actually, and I still use it as well as Content Cow. Um, but with Content Cow, what I love about it is the fact that you have this visual calendar where you can see all of the content and when it's going out. And it's just it's just the view is just so good. And that's what makes it for me. That, mm. That's what makes it such a good system. So when people have got all of their content, obviously, and people still do this they go onto the individual networks and they schedule it out on the individual networks you can schedule natively to facebook you can schedule natively to twitter people some people don't know that you can schedule natively to twitter but there is a scheduler there mm. you can't schedule to instagram um you can schedule but you still have to push the button you still have to push the, the push notifications for it yeah of course yeah exactly you know what these tools like buffer and like content cow do is they give people obviously the ability to be able to upload content in one day so you've created all this content you upload it and you put it in to the calendar when it's all going to go out with all the right messages and that kind of thing so you can see your whole plan for the whole month for example mm. uh, and then you know if there's other people in your team that need to look at it before it goes out they can approve it on content cow before it actually you know Which goes is... out into the big wide world of social media yeah um so you know i yeah i i think it's an i think it's one of my favorite tools that i've used for a long time content cow mm. um just because of the way it's so wonderfully visual yeah and i think the good thing about it is it's because because obviously, you know, they're a fairly newish company as well. Like I know they're well, they're probably about two years, three years now at this stage. But I know Andy, he they're they're constantly, constantly innovating. They're constantly yes. updating that. So, you know, there's something new that's happening with it every month. You know, it's yeah. it's like I remember when it was in its infancy stage and he talked to us about it and we thought it was a brilliant idea. And since then, like if you look at it from where it was a year ago to where it is now, it's just it's really it's just it's so it's come on so much and the constant constantly doing that which is great to see that then it's not just going to be there's the tool boom that's yeah. it and use it whereas they constantly are looking and they they love the feedback as well because i've often we've yeah. often said something to them and they say oh yeah and they'll come back to you on it and that they you know they'll ask you what, what why you're saying that or what's your opinion on that and why do you think you need that and they do look at it and you know the beauty of with the yeah. guys at content Cal, and this isn't we aren't affiliated to a guys we're just we just love it they are they're such a good nice guys but they're all digital marketers and they've all yeah. been social media 
media market so they know what it is that the problems yeah. people are having they've they've been there and that's I think is is the main reason why they created that too you know and they're just seeing it they were using it as I think it was originally I know if I remember rightly when Andy was talking on he was saying it was originally just for an in-house thing and then they seen it and they went hold on we can market this and this yeah. this can help other people so yeah it's it's very good very good um, moving on then you were you were also I noticed that you do like a little bit of design wizard yeah um, so yeah going back to the content the tools and stuff you know this is another this is another business that is a, a tool that's actually came about from I think the fact that they had a really good image library a really good stock image library they're a company in Ireland actually mm. and um, and then they so they decided to create this thing called um, design wizard and it's quite similar to Canva in a way but actually there's a there's a, there's more things that you can do with it and um, there's so many more images that you can use that are different to the kind of your general sort of shutterstock sort of thing and you can upload your own font so you can have your own brand kit in there but the other cool thing is you can create the, the, you can create the filters in there for your um for your instagram stories very good which is very cool and it's all in the in the right size and everything so i really like that um so i've been trying to use that a little bit more and c- because you know when you get used to tools so i've been getting so i'm used to canva and stuff and you have your favorites don't mm. you but i love the fact that this is kind of like a you know a new company and they've got they've got something that i think they've got something really good here it's another content creation tool and it's just worth trying and it's not expensive it's it's, it's you know it's a really really de- it's free basically yeah. um and there's you know there's a paid option as well where you can have so many assets and stuff rather than having to pay like a dollar or whatever it is every time you have a photo um you can you can get different elements and stuff so yeah that's another really really good tool that i really enjoy using mm. and i think the key here is is to you know for people and we've said it before you know is you know get on try these tools have a look yeah. at them see what they can do you know you'd be surprised you could be amazed and say okay this is brilliant why didn't they use this three or four years ago why didn't they use this a couple of months back or there's tools out there that you just may not like but the whole idea is is you need to you need to investigate them and you need to then look at them and see can they work for my business can they make me smarter and more efficient on what i'm doing you know can i brand that really looks well because that's what these these tools are a lot of social media marketers use a lot of these tools to create images all right you know we look if we are creating big images and we're creating you know full campaigns or whatever yeah all right do look at getting a professional to do it yeah. but you yeah. know if you're doing it on the fly and you want to create and you have a small business and you have a small budget definitely these are the tools that you should be looking at they're, because they're just so they're so handy and they're so easy to use in some ways but you'll never know unless you actually go and try them well that's it it's just about trying it isn't it it's just about um and, and actually using what you feel most comfortable with mm. and what fits in with your life and your brand best as well um, because that's another thing to remember is that don't just create the content just because it looks nice to post it out there create the content with the customer in mind and also on brand I think it's really important that you remember to be on brand so that it's got your colours it's got your look it's got your feel um, and it's not just something you've put there because it looks nice do you know what I mean? Yeah totally oh totally and I totally agree with that because you see so much uh, content out there that have maybe five or six different fonts and Their, their logo is something totally different and whatever yeah. and you just go stop stop what you're doing yeah. look at what you're doing because if consistency yeah if you're looking at it and, and and people think oh well I have to have you know to highlight this word and highlight and I go no that, that doesn't that doesn't work yeah. what people want to see is is you know they want to see the proper images mm. they want to see clean crisp and understand it but you also you get recognised for being on brand and you know yes. be, so it becomes that even the words are not, not even seen but they know if Compass Media put out something something this yeah. is they know it's our immediately it's compass media from the typeface and the fonts yeah. and you know the images and whatever and i think that's that's a key part i and we done a podcast previously with uh, trevor lorkins the digital alchemist and he reiterated this so much and yeah. it really is and i think that's about all about content creation as well yeah. that you understand these aspects as much as you know writing the content or getting your message it has to be on brand i think on it brand. really does you know and just a, just a tip on that and um, Trevor probably um, touched on this as well just having just one sheet of A4 like on or it doesn't have to be a sheet obviously it can be digital probably better mm. if it's digital <laughs> just with your brand kit on it you know the hex codes for the colours so that you might have three colours that you use for everything um, you might have two fonts that you use for everything write those fonts down put the brand colours down um, and then put some images in there as well to show what really you know represents your brand and then when you go to create something always have this in mind 
mind. And then every time you create, you know that it's going to be on brand. Everything you create is going to to be on brand. It's going to have the right colors. It's going to have the right fonts. And it's going to have the right kind of style of images. So yeah, like you were saying, when people look at you or they see something, they know it's you. It's just absolutely going to be you, whether it's got your logo on it or not. Yeah, very good. Very good. Um, Look, it's it's we uh, could spend hours here talking about yeah. different content tools and, it, you know, it really is. And some of the tools that we've talked about here today have been really, really excellent. Um, and I'd definitely be going out and checking out a few of them. There's no doubt about that. But um, Lucy, thanks. We really appreciate you because I know you're very busy. And, thanks for having me. And we just wanted to say, you know, very much thank you. But how can people get in contact with you if they're looking to find out more information? OK, um, well, so I've got a blog, which is Lucy S. Hall com and that's got loads of help and tips and stuff around social media and that sort of thing and the details of the live event that we've got called kickstart social dot media and um and obviously social day i mean social day is an amazing resource for people who um, want to learn more about marketing and stuff so that's social uk or just find me on twitter which is at lucy s hall very good, very good. And I suppose if you put even you put your name into Google, it'll come back with all these with all this information as well. Oh, it come if you put my name into Google, it'll come up with the triathlete, I think. Oh Lucy. right, okay. So we have to be very careful now. <laughs> so maybe Lucy Hall social media and then you'll find yeah, me. Exactly, exactly. Brilliant stuff. Okay, Lucy Wilson, thanks for your time and uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you as always. And we wish you every success in the future. And I'm sure you'll be back on our podcast fairly soon because I'm sure we have loads more tools that we could talk about so we'll have to get you back for a part two i suppose oh i hope so alan i've really enjoyed it thank you so much for having me no problem we'll talk to you soon thanks lucy bye-bye Bye. so my thanks to lucy for coming on the show today a very very insightful conversation there and some fantastic tools as well that you can use for content creation and for your uh, planning and scheduling as well. So as I said, my thanks to Lucy. And don't forget, if you do want to find out more information about Lucy, you can uh, visit her website at avisomedia.com or you can also find her on socialday.co.uk and you can also find her on the uh, usual social media networks from LinkedIn to Twitter to Facebook, you name it, she's there. So as I said, once again, thanks to Lucy for coming on the show. And if you would like to find out more about some of the previous podcasts that have happened here on the Social Media Talks, you can log on to the website at www.compassmedia.ie forward slash social media talks podcasts. We are also available on Mixcloud, iTunes and also on Soundcloud as well. And if you like what you hear, please do subscribe to the channel and like and share it out with your community. I've been Alan Hennessy and this has been the Social Media Talks podcast and uh, we'll see you all very, very soon. So on next week at the same time, the best of luck and we'll talk to you soon. And as I always say, be social. On the next time, bye-bye. Social Media Talks podcast is a production from compassmedia.ie.